This is going to be based on how to build high probability trading ideas using the NJT concepts, building trade ideas, my repeatable process. I mean, my process to building trade ideas has always been the same. It's always based on the concepts, of course. For me, it's just automatic. I've done it for so long in terms of building the same trade ideas in the same ways for such a long time. Something really important to understand about building a trade idea is it's nothing to do with your entry and your trade idea are going to be two completely different things. Again, the entry can be based on the same concepts to find in the perfect pinpoint entry, of course. But for me, all of these concepts are built on the higher time frames, So that's anything from 15 minute above. And you can use these same concepts or the same process to just understand how to build a trade idea, right? So you could build a trade idea based on everything above the one hour. And by the time you get down to the lower time frames, you could have your trade idea from everything from the one hour and above. It's just about going through the time frames, finding the best locations, finding the best process, sorry, the best areas and best process to, to actually trade this and use the system and use the process to find the direction. And then it's all about just trading that direction on time frames. Let me just let these people in. Cool. So what I'm going to do first is just explain the concepts, if you like, to build in a high probability trading idea. They're all very important in their own rights and the order of process is very important for me, but each, each in their own right, you can use to build a high probability trading idea. So obviously for me, the first thing I'm always doing is thinking about the structure of the market, right? So are we in a trending, sorry, are we in a sideways ranging market? Are we in a trending market? Or are we in an initiation market, right? Because as soon as I understand what sort of market condition we're in, I know what sort of decisions I want to make in what sort of locations. So I'm always first thinking sideways ranges. If we're in a sideways range, I know how to place a sideways range. I'm either looking for the swings to be taken or the edges. If we're in a trend here, we've got those A to B legs. For me, I always look for them to break structure, show them some intention in the market. I know I'm always going to be looking above that 50% area for those continuations, or I'm going to be looking for the edges, right? So that's just understanding of trends. If we're in initiations, this is one of the only times where you could potentially sell low or buy high in the market. And it's always going to come from a sideways range in the market or a point of mitigation in the market. The second one, I'll show you some examples of these on the actual chart as well. So like, this is the first way when I come to the charts, this is the only thing I'm really bothered about thinking about. First of all, I just want to understand what sort of market structure that we're in. The second thing, intention, everyone knows how to understand intention. You guys know what RAMC is, sideways range, initiation, mitigation, continuation. So if price is at a point of mitigation here. What sort of phase am I going to anticipate next from the market? A potential continuation phase. If we break out of a sideways range, which again is why I always start with structure in the market, because if we break a low or we break a high, that's a potential initiation phase coming into the market. Obviously, then if we're pulling back or we're reacting from a sideways range here to the left and it ends up becoming a pullback, this could become a trending market. For example, this could also become a trending market as a continuation to the upside or to the downside. So. That's intention, right? We're just playing out of a sideways range. We're making decisions at points of mitigation for some potential continuation phases in the market. Whether that be a bullish or bearish scenario is always going to come from a sideways range. That's what intention is, right? It's what following intention is in the market. Third one, location, right? So once I've understood the structure of the market, I understand what the intention is. I want to know if I'm buying low or selling high. I also want to know, obviously, if we're in a range where the mitigation points are underneath the swing highs and swing lows from the range, depending on whether I'm looking for sells or buys and where we are based on location. If we're in trend, I'm looking for that 50% area to sell at premium prices or buy at discount prices, obviously depending on the direction. And that's pretty much it, right? When we're in initiations, it's very, this is the only time where I'll happily sell low or buy high. So. If we're at a point of mitigation here, this is a potential initiation phase in the market. If we've broken out of a sideways range here, this is a potential initiation phase. So these are the only two times where I would happily sell low in a move if price is in that initiation or continuation phase, because these are going to be those aggressive moves in the market typically. Obviously, it's not 100%. Sometimes you're going to get trending markets. Sometimes you're going to get price breaks out of a sideways range and starts to move really slow and then starts to take off. Like there's different variations. You have to go into the market 
and actually experience these things for yourself so you can actually see what price is doing. But this is just a general rule of thumb, right? When I'm playing that intention. After that, obviously location, which I just went through. If we're in trends, I'm just looking to play pullbacks into this area. So I'll be looking for any ranges that are at uh, premium prices, whether they be in the 50% area or the edges. If I've got a sell narrative, all I'm doing is waiting for price to get here. I don't have to predict every single location. I wait for price to get here, show me its intention, and then I'll play that as a continuation. That's really important to understand as well. Like you don't have to always pick the perfect area because if there's like three or four ranges in this move here, you don't have to put every single one on and say price has to react from all of these. You can just wait for price to get there, show its intention again, either on the lower time frame or for me, the 15 minute, and then play that intention to the downside. You don't have to be perfect in picking all the locations in the market. You just have to know how to read sideways ranges or read buy or sell orders in the market. Once you understand the representation of those, it's just about price moving into there and reading the intention again. So that's location, then target, right? This is, I want to know where price is actually targeting for continuation of the intention that I'm playing. So again, go back to RAMC. This is a sideways range initiation at that point of mitigation. Where's the target going to be for continuation? Always going to be the low for a continuation, right? If this sideways range that we have here on the left, mitigation and continuation, it's always going to target the high for a continuation. So that's the last part of the understanding of a, a good trade idea for me is where's price targeting. I don't always have to know, like if price is broken out beside his range and we're in initiation, I don't always have to know where price is going to target. Sometimes it's just about getting involved in that sort of phase of the market and just letting price show you. That's the only time where I don't really have a target is when we're in that initiation phase of a breakout of a sideways range. For me, then I'll just, I'll look to just take sales continuations out of the sideways range because I don't know how far price is going to extend in that initiation because there is no actual point where we could start to see a continuation from no actual target. So that's the only time in the target where I, I wouldn't have a target. So yeah, any questions before we move on to the charts of any of these? Some of you guys that have been here for a long time, you've already heard this sort of information before. This is nothing new to you, especially some of your, some of the experienced members, some of you new guys, this might be new, but this is how I build every single trade idea. It's always based on these same concepts, these same four concepts. So using these same concepts every single time, I'm just going to show you how I get into the trades that I've got into. Also going to obviously recap some of the trades that I've taken for this month so far. So first trade, right? Obviously right now we can see that price is in overall sideways range. So when I'm thinking about the structure of the market, I'm understanding price is moving sideways. We've broken out of the sideways range here. So when I'm thinking about structure, I'm thinking if price has broken out of a sideways range, what sort of phase of the market, what sort of structure would I anticipate price to be in? Now I would anticipate the initiation phase. If we don't get that and we run below a swing low in the market and start moving back in, we're still moving sideways. So at that point, again, all I'm thinking about is, okay, we're not in that initiation phase within price. We've moved right back in, into the actual sideways range. So that's the first part of just understanding structure. When we're in the sideways ranges, this is also very important as well. Once I understand we're in a sideways range and we've taken out a swing low and we haven't extended, I know that we're still inside that sideways range. So when I'm thinking about what price does in a sideways range, it's going to either take out swing highs or swing lows and move back into the range, or we're going to move towards the edges of the sideways range. And these are going to be the best locations for reaction points, right? So if price came back up into the edge here, I'll be looking left to see a sideways range. And then I can play that intention again in price, right? So I'm either looking at good locations at the edges, or I'm looking for price to run a swing and move back into the range. That's always how I play a sideways range which is why I always start with the structure first. And I always understand what is the structure of the market, because then I know what sort of locations I'm playing. And I know the intention that I'm going to be playing if price breaks out the sideways range. There's only a few things that can happen. So here we see break out the sideways range here. So we would anticipate a potential initiation phase in the market after a breakout. What do we get? Price moves right back in, right? So the structure of the market is we're still in the sideways range. So again, for me, I would just pull this all the way down and I'll see the we're in a sideways range. What's the intention, right? So obviously we have to see where price has reacted from here previously. Obviously it's reacted from a sideways range. If I was to go back onto a higher time frame, 
but let's go back onto the higher time frame. We can see that price reacted from a sideways range here. So for me, again, you could just use the whole area to understand prices reacting from sideways range, because then that's building your intention within the market here. So again, all I'm playing is sideways range, which is this whole green area that we've just drawn on initiation prices come back here again in the future into this sideways range. And we've created that sideways range. We've run below that low and we haven't extended to the downside. We've moved back in. So now I'm thinking about playing that range template within price, where we run below a low and we move back in. So I have intention of higher price, uh, higher prices because we're coming back into a sideways range where buy orders have been created, where they need to be mitigated out from. The structure of the market is a sideways range overall. So I know that if we don't extend, I'm looking for price to move back in. Where's the location, right? This is the next part of a high probability trading idea for me. Swing high to swing low. You can either use the entire sideways range, of course, and just put the, obviously the 50% tool on and the edges within price, or just take the swing high to swing low and understand that we're in lower prices or higher prices. So obviously we're at low prices at this point. And then where's the target, right? In terms of where the target for this trade was, I don't know where the target is. It's either gonna even move back into this 50% area, or we're going to see continuation right up into this high. Obviously, a potential continuation phase within price, right? Obviously, this high is at a low price relative to this continuation because this will be like a daily continuation or something here. But that's enough, right, to understand where price could potentially head to for a continuation. So with that being said, if we're at low prices, we move back into the range, we're playing the intention of higher prices. For me, all again, I want to see in my session, is that new OB to play a continuation of the bullish direction. Does that make sense to everyone? Everyone understanding that's how the, that's how I'm building the trade ideas and building consistent high probability trading ideas. Obviously we'll go through more, but any questions, feel free. Lovely. Cool. So in terms of this actual trade that I took, obviously, as you guys know, with the 15 minute entry, I'm looking for that fractal low to be printed. If obviously, if we get a fractal low at a higher time frame mitigation as well, it gives a potential turning point within the market. So the entry was following the continuations after this fractal low has been printed here. We'll zoom in so that you guys can see that. So price has moved down, pulled back, run below that low here and moved in the opposite direction. Again, we've got two buy candles out of session. So price hasn't invalidated that move. We can see that price has continued higher. Every single high has taken out the previous high. Then we pull back and we see every single low has consecutive, uh, consecutively taken out the previous low and then we get continuation, right? So there's price has not invalidated it, hasn't moved into a sideways range. This is one move up, this is one move down and a continuation. So market open, this was a buy continuation for me. Let's put this back on. So you guys can see the news events. As I said, always when there's news events at three o'clock or past three o'clock, me, I only look for that 1.5% instead of the 3% take profit. If it, ha if it doesn't close 15 minutes before the news, then I just manually close it. So I don't want to be involved during news. So this just ended up being very small profits on this day, barely anything on that trade. But again, following the same process, following the same trade idea, very high probability continuation play to the upside. And I was able to use my entry alongside the trade idea to get involved in the move. So that's pretty much that first trade and that first trade idea. Cool. Fridays. I don't trade Fridays. Then we get into Monday. Cool. So obviously we've broken out of this sideways range here. As we can see, price hasn't extended again, which is really important when we break out of sideways ranges and we don't get those continuations because we anticipate a potential breakout and initiation when we don't get that and we move back into the range. Obviously, we're still ranging, right? So we just extend that to the new high. That becomes the new sideways range. Then obviously, we've seen a continuation to the downsides. Obviously, we can go back again and see where our intention has come from. This whole sideways range that we have here. Again, when we get that sideways range here, I mean, you could even use this whole area here. This is the low to the high. This is the whole sideways range here. And then we've seen the continuation down into this low as a target for continuations to the downside. So then what's happened after that, right? Price has broken out of this sideways range again. So what sort of phase of the market am I going to be anticipating? Probably sound like a bit of a broken record at this point, but initiation, right? Initiations are not always going to look like straight down and straight up all the time because we're dealing with the higher time frame initiation sometimes. So sometimes we just get those moves where 
price just trickles down and just sees continuation to the downside. That is still a part of an initiation move within price. So again, going back to the structure of the market, what structure of the market are we currently in? We're currently in an initiation, right? We're bearish initiation. We've broken out the sideways range and we're seeing continuation. We haven't had any pullbacks into 50%. So typically when I'm looking for trends, I'm looking for swing high to swing low, pull back into that 50% area and then see continuation, right? This is a trending market for me when price starts to pull back into the 50% or higher, obviously into the edges if it wants to. And then we're seeing continuations to the downside. When we don't get those deep pullbacks and we get new ranges and continuations, that is how initiations move in the market. So the structure of the market is bearish initiation. So I know automatically just from the structure that I'm looking for sell continuations within my session. So intention, we're playing intention of lower prices. Obviously the intention is built from this sideways range. That's completed its intention for continuation to the downside. But like I said, when we break out of sideways ranges, I have no idea how far price is going to go. I just know we're in that initiation phase. So I'm only looking for continuations of that initiation. Location, again, when we're in initiations is the only time I'm happy to sell low within price. Because again, we're just breaking out in initiation. Like I said, I don't know how far it's going to go. And targets for this one, I don't know where price is targeting. The only thing I can do is anticipate all of the ranges like I've done here that price may react out from and then wait to see that intention or wait to see some sort of turning point or sideways range within the market. But until then, it's sell continuations. So this is the opportunity that I got into for sell continuations. So we see here, price is initiated to the downside. Let me just zoom in so you guys can see the candles. When I'm reading price at this stage, all I'm doing is reading the current candles, right? Because the trade idea is bearish. I'm only looking for sells. The system that I'm using is only based on reading the direction within the market and trading alongside it. So here we see price move down. See every single low took out the previous low until we got that pullback here with this doji candle. And then price took out this low and moved back to the upside. So essentially, this would be a potential buy opportunity if I was looking for buys, but the trade idea is sells, right? Because we're in a bearish initiation within price. Then we get the move up, pull back, run above that high, two bearish candles here. Again, it happens outside a session, so I need to wait for price to get into the session, but we see price hasn't invalidated that new OB as we see here. This is the order book that I'm playing for shorts here. Price doesn't take out this previous high and we just get a move down, a pullback, and then the session opens with an engulfing candle to the downside. That's my sell opportunity. Again, there's news at three o'clock. So it's half percentage for the profit. But that's the sell opportunity for continuation that I got into as well on the Monday. Does that make sense to everyone with the, the trade idea that I build and the understanding of why I'm looking for structure, intention, why I'm thinking about selling low because we're in an initiation structure within the market the target for this one cool so we we'll move on tuesday right so obviously we've seen a reaction from here we've got a buy order that's come into the market here so this would be a new ob potential opportunity for buys again out of session could you explain later why the larger stop loss smaller the larger stop loss smaller tp the stop loss is 10 pips the take profit is 15 if it's a, so, oh, I assume you're talking about news, right? So if there's news at two, three, five, or seven, that's typically where I'll just do half take profit for that one. Because typically we don't always run 30 pips when there's news later in the day. So I've just, I just do half percentage profit on that one. If there's no news and it's just a normal regular day, then I'll always go for that 30 pip take profit. I hope that's what you meant. Cool. So let's go back. So obviously price has created a buy order in here. So we're seeing some buy intention coming into the market. So again, I don't know where, I don't have to predict this area. Price is showing me it wants to turn and it starts moving to the upside. I can just go back here, find out where the sideways range is, and then I can build the intention based on that. Right. So let's go back and do that. Probably have to go up to the daily for this one, to be honest. Here. So this whole area within here on the daily, obviously we run the swing low as well, which is quite important. This is a buy order here on the daily. So we got the move down, pull back, run below that low initiation to the upside, right? So this is a buy order 
here. So from this high to this low, that is a new OB that's been created in the market. That is buy intention that's come into the market previously. So again, we could anticipate that price would have to react out of this area here in the future, and that can create our intention, right? Whether you want to use that as just a buy order and be very specific. Me, normally, I just use the whole sideways range because all I want to do is see what structure we get in the future in this area. And then I can read it based on that intention within the market, right? So normally, I'll just do the whole sideways range if I'm thinking about areas. I know that there's a buy order in here. I know that there's like four other areas where price could react from in this buy area. But I just want to see what sort of price delivery we get here, right? Because I can read the current price action when we get here. I don't always have to pick the specific place. I can just pick a sideways range. That's enough for me to build intention within the market. So prices run their swing low as well. Obviously, when we run swing highs and swing lows, we can potentially see new opportunities or new intentions coming into the market. So again, that's a piece of significant information before we even get to the trades. So where was we were here? Move this, I need to get confused. So cool. So obviously this is out of session. All I'm doing is just reading the intention again, using the same concepts that I always use. So outside of the market, right? Oh, sorry. Outside of the uh, session, we can see that price has moved up here. We've taken out the low, we've taken out the high, we've moved back in, right? So we can very clearly see prices in a sideways market at the moment. So the structure of the market is a sideways range. So when we're in sideways ranges, again, I'm looking for edges and I'm looking for price to run swing highs and swing lows in the market. And then I'm going to play the new intention that comes into the market. But what is, could you explain later why stop loss asking why not 10 hour target? I assume. Yes. What Alex said, could you please explain what is meant by intention in? Yes. That's cool. So we'll, you're. We're going to go over that anyway. So cool. So the structure of the market, right? As I always say, start with the structure. So we're in a sideways range. So again, I know how I'm playing price when we're in a sideways range. I'm looking for the edges and I'm looking for price to run swing highs and swing lows. Typically, if price is in a higher time frame mitigation and I have a whole massive area, I'm typically going to wait for swing highs and swing lows to be run. That's not a hundred percent, right? If we get a really strong initiation to the upside and we start moving back really slow, that's when I'll look more for the edges. But typically, if price is moving very slow to the upside and to the downside, that's when I'll wait for the swing highs and swing lows to get run before I play that new intention in the market, right? Because price is creating a swing. So we need to see some sort of intention being created. And we can only do that when we run below swings in the market as well. So yeah, so the structural, uh, structure is sideways range moving into Tuesday. Obviously, this was a really nice sell continuation in London. I know quite a lot of you guys caught that for continuation to the downside. Location, right? Obviously, we're at buy low prices here. If we just think about where price is overall between this A to B point within the market, again, this is the 50% area. We're at low prices within the market. So, again, I'm looking more towards buy opportunities within the market. They're going to be the best opportunities to get those 30 pip moves in that direction. That's obviously location. Intention, again, for someone who asked about intention, is sideways range, initiation. When we come back into the sideways range, this is where we can play that mitigation for that next intention within the market. So this whole green area that I've got is just a point of mitigation where we could potentially see intention play out again, right? Intention is built in sideways range initiation. When price comes back in the future, that's where we can play that intention again, right? But intention within itself is this sideways range and initiation. That is what intention is in the market. Um, Cool. That makes sense. And then cool. So target. So again, if I'm playing continuation after prices run swing lows within the market, the first target is obviously going to be the potential range high or at least 50% of the sideways range in the market. So yeah, cool. So this was where I was looking for buys on Tuesday. Again, I didn't get my setup, unfortunately for a buy continuation in the session started here and didn't get any new OBs. Price just created a sideways range where we took the high took the low and we didn't create a fractal low within the market, but this is where I wanted to buy for a continuation. Again, the trade idea was there sideways range location was good at buy low. We're playing the intention of higher prices here as well. And then potentially targeting this high for that continuation to the upside, or at least the 50% area. So the trade idea was there for a buy continuation Again, just keeping everything consistent. So then we've got a breakout of the sideways range here. So again, what sort of phase of the market am I anticipating within price? 
that will be a continuation of this intention, a breakout initiation of the sideways range. So again, the structure of the market for me is initiation. And we can see that between this low point and where prices ended up, whether it be here or here, right? We haven't pulled back into that 50% area at any point within this move up. This is all one move, right? So for me, even though it doesn't look like this, where it's really aggressive to the upside or to the downside, we're still in that initiation within price because we've broken out of the sideways range. So the next phase of price after a sideways range breakout is always going to be that initiation phase, right? If we extend and continue within price, more people in. Cool. So structure, right, is uh, initiation, bullish initiation overall. We can also see overall as well. This is a potential swing high point, right? We do have a sideways range that's built here within price, sideways range and initiation to the downside. We've got equal lows down here as well that could potentially become a target to the downside. So this was one where I came into the session looking for buys, but as price created new intention from a point of mitigation, we could potentially see a continuation back to the downside, right? So I didn't, this was one of those days where I was a bit more neutral with price. Even though we've broken out and we are in that initiation, we can see that we are overall moving quite slow and a new sell order has come into the market at a point of mitigation. So I want to also play that intention to the downside as well. So this was like a very neutral day in terms of what I wanted to play. Both trade ideas are there. We're in that bullish initiation, but we are starting to slow down into a point of mitigation. So we have two intentions. We have a bullish intention. And we also have a bearish intention because we're at that point of mitigation where we could see the continuation phase of price. So that's what I'm playing as well. When it comes to location, right? This overall is a sell low location. So not the most ideal overall. I'd more, more want to be obviously towards the buys because obviously we're in buy continuations. And obviously this is around that 50% area as well. So I'm leaning more towards the buys at the start of the session. But if we get a sell intention from this range, that's also a great opportunity to play sell continuations there to the downside. And then obviously target. If this range follows through, these lows are going to get targeted. In terms of a bullish initiation, like I said, I don't know where the target is, but all I do know is that there is a lot of imbalance sat above here. And if we are going to see a turning point from this point of mitigation, this high will become the first target for that potential continuation to the upside, right? So that was my... Just letting these people in. One second, make sure you can still hear me. You can. So that was the intention, right? Does that make sense to everyone that I'm playing the intention of the market for sales and also playing the intention for buys, right? So this was a day where I hedged, ended up taking two losses, but again, just keeping the trade ideas consistent. Turn off the waiting room. Good idea. How do I do that? Oh yeah, here it is. I've got it. Good shout. So yeah, so this was day price ended up continuing. Obviously it took me out of the buy, didn't quite make it to 15 pips for a break even. And then again, I got into the sell. We saw continuation, ended up taking me back out again and didn't get the opportunity to be able to break even on that one either because it didn't hit 15 pips. So again, good trading overall, played the intention on both sides, read the market on both sides well. Just one of those days that didn't play out overall. Again, then we move into the next day, right? Again, trade idea is really important. When I'm building these trade ideas, right? I'm not building them the night before. These are happening on the day, right? Because we're I'm day trading. I'm trading intraday markets. I'm trading intraday moves. So I'm not building the trade idea from the night before and saying, yep, we're, go we're taking sales. I'm watching the price throughout the day every now and again. Then when it comes to my session, I'm thinking about structure, intention, location, and then the potential target, right? That's what I'm thinking about during the session. And I build my trade idea based off that. And then when that narrative or that trade idea is in play and I see my setup, that's when I play the direction of the, the intention. So cool. So next day. So obviously we can see as well, price has broken out of that sideways range. Again, we've got another sideways range that's sat above here. So the low to the high point, this is all a sideways range within here, followed by initiation to the downside. So let's move that. Shit, let's do that again. Cool. So this is all a sideways range, right? When I'm thinking about sideways range, we're just looking at price takes the low, takes the higher, moves back in, right? So I know that this is a sideways range overall. Then we see initiation to the downside. 
doesn't really matter to me that price has come into this location multiple times because I can still play that same intention if we react from here and see continuation to the downside again in the future. And for me, just because of how price is moving, right? Moving into this location, moving out this location, it was always possible that this might be a massive sideways range being created in the market. And if it was, then obviously we're going to move to better locations within price and potentially target swing lows. So that was like the idea between, sorry, behind playing this for sales as continuations on Thursday. Again, if this follows through, this is the target as well. So overall, we're seeing the continuation of this intention, obviously in London session, this was really nice continuations as well to the downside. I know we'll call uh, this one short. So then price is obviously moving back into the, the sell range here. This is that new OB to the downside. So I'm playing the intention of lower prices here to the downside, obviously market open, sorry, not market open, New York open is when I'm looking for that sell continuation to play that intention to the downside. Now, for me, this was two intentions coming into the market again. Obviously, when price is sideways, I'm looking at two sides. We've got A to B here, and we've also got sideways range initiation. We're coming back into that sideways range for that potential mitigation here at that area, and we see that intention coming into the market again in the future. So I had a short bias coming into the session, but when I've seen the new order being created in the market, excuse me, new order being created in the market here, with that new OB, again, price has moved down, pull back, run below that low, and we've got the bullish engulfing. So for me, that's the uh, buy order coming into the market here. So again, when we've reacted there, or we're starting to react in the moment, all I'm doing is just looking at where price has reacted from, seeing that we have a doji candle followed by initiation. Again, I don't exactly know which point price is going to react from until we actually get there, and then I'll draw it on. And then I have my narrative, right? We have a to be trend, potential trend coming into the market, pull back into where discount prices of this A to B here. So all I'm doing is looking at ranges at discount prices for locations. So I know that I'm buying low. The intention obviously in the market is sideways range initiation, mitigation, continuation. And then the target for continuation is going to be this high here for that continuation, right? So that's the trade idea. When the intention has come into the market, this is where I've executed. And obviously that ended up being uh, one that played out. So I took one loss and one TP on that week. So that was the week of trading last week. Again, every single trade idea is all based on exactly the same concepts, it's based on exactly the same trade ideas, and it always follows the same trade ideas. Any questions before we move on? What have you based the buy level on to tone green area? Is that a sell to buy order block? Could you explain that area, please? I assume you mean this area here? Cool, let's zoom into that. So reading the candlesticks, right? This is a, this is more a question for you than it is for me. So reading the candlesticks, what sort of candlestick is this candlestick here? This one, indecisive, right? So what would indecisive mean to you? So if price has reacted from an indecisive candle, what does that mean? Feel free to unmute your mic as well if you did want to. Like what sort of narrative would you build from understanding that's an indecisive candle? Pressures. Hello. Is this Richard, yeah? No. Oh yeah, this is Richard. Oh hi Richard. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's just it's getting the entries that I'm getting confused by. So it'd just be good if you could just talk through what you're seeing there and yes, so why you mark that out. This candle here, right? You see this as indecision candle. So when price reacts from this indecision candle, what's your thoughts in the moment of what's happening in the future? Well, you, right? When are you marking that up? You've marked that up after the other candles have gone up? Yeah. Or you? After the, oh, okay. Yeah. After, after price is engulfed here, or as it's reacting from this area, I'm just going yeah. left and seeing what it's reacted from. Like, okay. No, that I makes more sense. That, I can see that there's a whole range here that price could react yeah. from. I can see that there's a range here price could react from. I can see there's a range here that price could react from. I'm not going to have every single range on the chart because I can read where the ranges are, right? So when price gets there and reacts and start to see some sort of reaction within the candles, that's when I'll go back and say, okay, what's price reacting from? So I don't, yeah. I don't have to predict it. I just react to what I'm seeing. Um, yeah, fine. That makes sense. So in terms of this candle, right? Picking this candle, you said this is indecision candle. So what does that mean when price is reacting from indecision in the future? What like 
I'm just trying to pick your brain to understand how you see this candle and what you would anticipate next. Well, from the one that follows it, I can see a strong intention to the upside there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's saying it's not going to go down from there, isn't it? It's yeah. Turning so, the market. So when I'm thinking about candlesticks, right, they all build a picture and an understanding of what can potentially happen even mm. now in the moment. So like if you was to see that candle now in the moment, what would you anticipate next? Or it's a range, I guess, isn't it? It's a it's range on the lower range. time frames. It's yeah. A range. So reading the current candle, if this was to build in the moment, right? And you're seeing a doji candle in the moment, like you see in the future here, price is building a range, right? So what happens after a sideways range is built? We see initiation within the market. Now, okay. if price comes back here again in the future and reacts, which is here, what's the phase of price that you would anticipate happening next? What would you anticipate happening next if price reacts from this sideways range? So obviously, yeah, then the mitigation from there. Yeah. Mitigation and a potential continuation phase, right? Continuation, yeah. So that's intention, right? As long as you can read what a sideways range is, which is a doji candle followed by initiation, that's range initiation. When price gets back into here in the future, you can always build an intention of what can potentially happen next because you're at a point of mitigation for a potential continuation phase use yeah. an ramc so if you say this is indecision it does it, it can't build a narrative from indecision you have to build a narrative from a sideways range and an initiation because that shows intention so when we get back here in the future you can play that as a potential continuation phase of the intention that's coming into the market again at that point of mitigation that makes sense though yeah so in no, terms of, in terms of like the actual entry like obviously that's the trade idea, right? That I'm playing. I'm playing obviously an A to B here, structure A to B, location, we're at low prices. I wait for price to get there, react. Then I've got sideways range here, initiation, mitigation, potential continuation phase. So I've ticked off everything, right? Structure, potential trend continuation. RAMC gives me intention for higher prices. I've got a buy order at discount pricing here that's being reacted out from. And a potential target for price is a continuation here to the upside to target this high to the upside, right? So that's the trade idea. That's why I'm always building the trade idea. Now, when it comes to entry, of course, I just want to see a fractal low printed at this point of mitigation here. So this is where we get that fractal low in the market. Mm -hmm. And then I get my entry candle within the market. So that's, right. the whole, that's the whole trade idea. That's the entry added on to the trade idea. So. If you was to use this same process to build a trade idea every single time, your entry is going to look different to my entry. It's always going to be different because everyone trades different. Like Chuck's entry always looks different to mine. Lenny's is always going to look different. Alex, Connor, we all have different entries, right? But we can all base our trade ideas on these concepts because they are high probability ways of getting into the market at good locations, playing intentions with targets. And it's repeatable. You can use this same process every single time to build high probability trading ideas in your session. Again, like the, there's some things that you don't control about the, obviously the, the timing of everything. Cause sometimes obviously you've got a session where you might open up in a shitty location. You might not get the, the move for the session. It might be a range session. For example, those are all just things that you just can't control with your system, right? Just that, that stuff that all just works over time. Um, so again, like those parts of all of it, if we just did, took away sessions, obviously we could just trade all the time with these same concepts, but obviously we want to focus during the sessions, making sure that we're executing flawlessly during the sessions, so on and so on. But yeah, that was last week. So if I understand it, the final confirmation before clicking the button is the engulfing candle as an initiation from that point of mitigation, correct? Yeah. So like the engulfing candle is one way to get involved in a potential a uh, new OB creation. Another one is to see any of the two bearish candles or two bullish candles. So like, for example, here, if this is my entry, right? So move up, pull back, run above a high, and then see one bearish candle, two bearish candles, and then I would execute here. Or if this was one bearish engulfing, then I would execute here. So that's the ways that I'm looking to get involved in my setup. So here we see new OB created, one engulfing candle here. So this is a good opportunity to then take continuation to the upside. 
cool let's go on to the next week again fridays don't trade fridays every single week let's put this on so we have some perspective of location as well so this is that swing high to swing low point obviously we started to get that pullback so now we can think about location from a higher time frame perspective as well Cool. So getting to Monday, right? So obviously we're seeing a continuation here on Monday. Again, we broke out to the upside. So we got, let's put this in green. So we got, this is our trend continuation formation. Once we've broken that high, we're in that continuation to the upside. When we break out of a high, all I'm doing is just following those A to B continuations within price at that point, right? Cause we're in that trending market at that point when price breaks out of a swing high. As long as we, um, all I'm doing is going back to the most recent low within price here, most recent swing point, because that then creates that swing low to swing high. Obviously, this is an A to B that's pulled back to 50% as well. So that's where I'm looking. That's why I'm looking at this as my swing structure point in the market as well. So this will be that swing structure in the market. And then again, we just see continuation here to the upsides. Price is broken out from the high, go back, find the lowest point before the breakout. And then this becomes that obviously area of structure as well. So again, this is all happening outside a session. I'm not really that bothered about what price does outside a session. All I'm doing is thinking about where price is reacted from at the start of the day, normally London, right? So I can see Asia being created. I'm pretty much at the charts for 2 a.m. every single day here. So I can see Asia building, but I don't really care too much about Asia. It's London that I really do start to look at price and set alerts. So when price breaks lows and highs, for example, like I would have an alert on this low, I would have an alert here, just so that during the day, if I'm out and about and I'm doing stuff, when price is breaking these points, I can start to think about the charts and anticipate what could potentially happen. So even though it's outside of my session, I can still pull up the charts and have a look and say, okay, price has broken that low. What does that then mean, right? Where has price come from? What could it potentially be targeting for a continuation to the downside? So on and so on, right? I can start to build the narrative of the day and where price wants to go for the day just by setting alerts and just being, being active with what price wants to do for the day. So cool. So obviously we get the reaction here for, this is good to put the limit order or is it good to put the limit order or market execution? Depends on how you want to execute, I guess. Like for me, I obviously always market execute. If you limit, then it has to be based on an area that you want to want to execute your trade from. It was a very random question. So yes, obviously prices reacted from here. Again, this is, so Will trades London session. Will trades the setup during London session. And I know these are the moves that he's getting involved in. London session for this setup, for the, for the entry that I have has been very good over January and February. New York, not so well. But again, it's just, uh, these things just happened over time, um, for the setup. So again, we've had a reaction here in London session or just before London session. I don't have to predict every single area. Like I always said, I know that this is a sideways range here. These are all sideways ranges, right? So when price reacts from here, I can just put on the whole sideways range here. So again, all I'm thinking about is price has moved down, created this low, pulled back created this high and then moved down. So right, so this is a representation of a sideways range within the market here. Let's just draw that on low to a high point within the market. Drag that across, Drag it all the way across actually. Cool, so obviously Monday, right? So we're looking at potential continuations. So again, thinking about the structure of the market, yes, we're at low prices overall. But if we're in a sideways range, we somehow have to find a top of this sideways range. And obviously price is broken out, not seeing any continuation, not seeing any aggression and speed. So when we see that reaction there and we start to see aggression and speed back to the downside, I'm anticipating this could be the, the, the top of this potential sideways range that we're in, right? Because that's the only thing it potentially could be. If price isn't seeing bullish continuation to the upside at this point, and we're seeing the aggression and speed back to the downside, and we've broken structure to the downside, we have to be moving back into a sideways range or at least into areas where we potentially see some continuation to the upside happening. So that's the structure. Obviously we're moving into a overall sideways range in market. Let's move this out of the way. The intentions built in the sideways range here, sideways range initiation creates this low 
pullback mitigation potential continuation phase to the downside. So this is the intention that I'm playing in the market. Location for the trade on Monday, not ideal, right? Because when we think about location of the market, overall, this is overall in the middle of the sideways range, not the best location for trading, of course, but again, just to see the location and then the target, obviously this low for continuation to the downside. There's sometimes I come into the market and I think these are not the best locations to trade from, but I like overall, I'd much rather just get involved in the trade. If I'm seeing my intention playing out within the market, I'm prefer to be a lot more aggressive within price and just keep that consistent with, with how I'm trading. So overall, the structure from this point of mitigation, like I said, when we get potential continuation phases here, when we're at those points of mitigation, this can become that potential continuation phase. So this is the point of mitigation that we're seeing here. We're seeing the aggression of speed to the downside and we're seeing initiation structure. We're not pulling back deep. We're just seeing continuation to the downside. So I know that I'm only looking to sell overall within the session at the start of the session here for continuation to the downside. So again, this is what I'm looking to get involved in. Session open. We've already got the sell order in play up here. So all I'm doing is playing continuation of that direction within the market. Again, one of those ones that ended up moving down to about 14 pips and then coming back to take me out. The only other time that I looked for continuation back to the upside was when I was looking for, let's move this so you guys can see as well. Let's move this. Because there was a buy order within here that I could have played to the upside for a continuation. So we had a move down pullback run below that low into this edge here of this A to B movement. So this was a potential buy that I could have taken at the start of the session. The reason I don't want to get involved in the buy there is because this has created those equal lows within the market. And if this is that continuation, price is going to target the swing low first. So there's no point in just wasting potential opportunities or potential money on a trade where it's very obvious that price is going to target these lows for continuation to the downside. What I thought price might do is run the swing low here and at least start to pull back within this move and create a trend for a continuation to the downside. That was my anticipation within price. So when we run the swing low here, we reacted from the sideways range that we have between this high, this low, this point here. So that's my intention that I'm playing within the market, that prices run the swing low here, potentially going to pull back in this trend for a continuation. And because we're at a higher time frame mitigation here, which is this whole green area here, there's always a potential that we could run swings and actually take off back to the upside and see continuation. And of course, we didn't even hit that 50% area as well. So that's always a potential for continuation. So that created the narrative of higher prices after the swing low was taken. And then it's all just about getting involved in the entry when I saw it. So move down, pull back run below that low bullish engulfing. So this was the buy opportunity that I got involved in to the upside. Obviously the narrative ended up being correct. Overall price did end up continuing, but the session was just a sideways range, right? This is typically where my setup doesn't really play out too well when we're in those sideways range in markets. But yeah, that was the trades for Monday. Ended up getting taken out of both. Again, the same trade idea. Then today, obviously we've got I actually thought price was going to take off to the upside today, especially as we broke out of this sideways range here that we had and we started seeing that aggression and speed to the upside. Obviously, it's always potential that this is an area that price could react from because it's a sell order in the market that hasn't been mitigated. But to me, when we broke out of this sideways range, I thought it was going to take off to the upside. Again, price reacted and took off to the downside. So again, if I'm clearing all of this and I'm just thinking about that, that potential for higher prices isn't playing out at that point. Let's just clear this. Move that back up. And clear all this actually. So this is one big sideways range here from this low point to this high point here. So when I'm thinking about potential continuations to the downside, if price hasn't broken out of this sideways range and seen a bullish initiation to the upside, and obviously we get that massive candle to the downside and we start to take out the range low, what am I then thinking? If price has broken out of a sideways range, we can potentially be in that initiation phase to the downside. And I don't know how far that's going to be 
continue into the downside if we do end up seeing that initiation to the downside, or obviously we move right back into the sideways range here at this point. So this was the sell continuation today, broken out the sideways range. So again, thinking about the structure, we're in initiation structure, intention, we're playing continuations of lower prices. I don't know how far price is going to go in its intention. Location, I'm selling low, but I'm selling in a bearish initiation, which is fine. And target, again, when it's in a bearish initiation out of the sideways range, I have no idea what the target is going to be. I just want to get involved in a sell continuation. So this was today's trades. Again, we've got new order created in the market. My screen comes back on here. So we've got new order here. So that's already in play. Move up, pull back, run above that high, and then continuation to the downside. And then this was the entry after the news. Obviously, news at 1.30, you have to wait till after the news. And then this ended up just being a break even, went to 15 bips, come back for a break even. But yeah, again, same, always use the same consistent trade ideas. I always look at the market in the same way and then apply my entry on top of that during the session. But that's pretty much it in terms of how I build trade ideas. If you build the same trade ideas during the session, you're always going to find high probability trading ideas. And it always comes down to your entry after that, how you enter the market playing that same trade idea. But yes, that's pretty much it, everyone. If you have any questions, feel free. I have a quick question. So today I was looking for my entry. Basically, I had a higher time frame buy order that was unmitigated. And I was looking to play that long. Uh, I saw a momentum shift basically at the low to try to play it. But on the A to B leg that I used for my entry on the one minute, the A to B leg got taken out. So at that point, I was wondering, would it be better to just delete that entry? Because I usually do a limit order. Would it be better to, if the high gets taken out, I'm playing longs, to just delete the order? Or should I just let it play out if it was unmitigated, the sideways range? So this is a one minute entry, yeah? Yeah, it is. So just talk me through it. So obviously today's price action, London or New York session, this one, a New York session, what time was it? Oh, let's see. This one, let's no, no, no. Let's see. So this was, I guess the sideways range happened 9.13. This is a lot Eastern Standard Time though. This is your, is, are you looking at this A to B on, on the? Sorry, no. The time difference kind of kills it. Sorry. So it would be, let's see, scroll over, I guess, closer to 1800. Yeah. I see. So you yeah, it's like most recent, probably like the past hour. This A to B or this A to B here? It was the past hour, like just recently happened on the one minute. Like, yeah, down there. Oh, down here. My bad. Yep, down there. As me looking up there, waiting to find this A to B, thinking it's got. Cool. Oh no, sorry, because you know what I mean. Yeah, no, sorry, it's the time difference that. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, right? So this A to B you're looking at here, right? A to B. Yeah. Right. So I was looking for shorts, but then I also had a higher time frame unmitigated uh, area that I was playing, but I was looking at the one minute playing an A to B. It's going long. Obviously, Chucks is your man for the minute chart, but we'll... Oh, okay, gotcha. We'll go for it anyway. Okay. And so it was in between the 1400 and the 1430. That sideways range, that was unmitigated right there. Yep. Yeah, I see it. This one here, yeah? Yep. Well, I see him. Is he going to be this whole area? We're using a sideways range. We are looking... Yeah. Or the one that's right next to it. Could I, I played it as if this was, let's see, uh, what I mean with an annotate on here. I yeah. I'm pretty sure you can, uh, okay. Yeah. It's that one right there. Okay, boom. This one. Yep. Exactly. That one. Right. Yep. And so I was thinking, so this area here, if I was using that as my A to B, but it got taken out up here, would this still be playable? Essentially, if it was unmitigated. When you say it got taken out, what do you mean? 
So I guess if I'm considering this my initiation point, when these highs got ran at this point here, would that be cause to say that this trade idea might not play out and it would be better to not get involved? Or should I still place this area down here? In terms of like thinking about the market and trends, so like your system is based on a trend, right? So you're looking at A to B points right. and you're looking for right. backs into those points. So for me, if you're looking at A to Bs, right? If I'm looking at A to B, price hasn't pulled back into this 50% area in any of these new highs that have been created. So all of this move up is still the initiation. It's not until price starts to pull back that now I can find my A to B, right? It would then be this high. Oh, okay, gotcha. So A gotcha, gotcha, to B gotcha. point, okay. right? So this, <laughs> like, when I think about trend initiation and ranges, this is why I always start with the structure because once you understand the structure and how to read the structure, you always know where you're looking for your trades. Like everything comes after just being able to understand how to play a range, how to play initiation, how to play a trend, right? And canceling each of those out. So initiation within my, my, my trading Bible, if you like, how I look at price and how I read price, initiation is not going to pull back into 50% area. So I know that if I was to draw price on any of these highs and think about price pulling back to 50%, it hasn't. So until price gets into oh. and creates that high and then starts to pull back, that then becomes my potential A to B within the market, right? Then obviously then you, gotcha. think about, then you can just use all the other ones, right? So where's the ranges at the, all the other uh, concepts that I've shown? Where's the ranges at discount pricing? We've got one here and obviously there's one below here. So these would be your two potential areas. That's intention, sideways range, initiation, mitigation, continuation if we follow through. And obviously target would then be this high for continuation, right? So if you was trading that as like a limit order, either put it as the open 50%. If you was trading it as a reaction, then you're just looking for price to get into this area and see some kind of reaction or some sort of candlestick that makes you want to press buy. Obviously, I'm not going to, I don't know what candlestick you want to play inside here. You have to go back and see that for yourself. Because I, I don't take these, and I don't know what sort of candlesticks would be ideal to take these sorts of entries. But, you know, if you were looking for buying gold things, for example, and putting your stop underneath this low, that could potentially be an entry that you would play right in this trade idea, just as an example for this trade idea. But yeah, good trading yeah. entry, right? We've seen the intention yeah. coming in A to B. Overall, this is just a sideways range being created. So like when trends are created in the market, we have to see a higher low and a higher high printed. Obviously, we can anticipate the higher low for a continuation to the upside. But if we only have an A to B printed in the market and price is starting to pull back, this is still just a sideways ranging market overall. Like we're not in a trend until we get a higher low and a higher high printed in the market. Otherwise, we're just in a sideways range overall. So for me, I would always just put this as a sideways range and I would be looking for the edges of the sideways range, right? So Overall, I would only look for anything in this bottom section, right? Because we've only created an A to B. We're anticipating that potential next higher low in the market, but we're still in a sideways range at this point or creating a sideways range based on how I look at trends and, and ranges being created. Okay, that was very helpful, actually. So based on the way I trade, I usually set a limit based on the intention and the sideways range that's left unmitigated. I guess, would it still be valid if I was to set the, uh, a limit at that sideways range, essentially this anticipating is, that it's going to run that high? This is the part that everyone differs with, right? Because the actual trade idea, you can always build based on the same concepts happening in the market. But the actual entry that you take has to be something that you've tested within the market. Were you forward tested, back tested? You're confident with trading every single time over a series of trades. Because you have to think from a probabilities perspective when it comes to actually executing the trades. The trade idea is always going to be based on higher probability because you're always basing it on repeatable concepts that do work and picking trades at good locations and playing intention in the market, right? That's always going to work all the time over time. And you're always going to be able to pick good locations. But the actual entry, that's where you have to think in probabilities and think in a series of 10. Because who knows if this, gonna, if this is going to react or not react. But what your system tells you to do is trade in this way and execute your trades in this way every single time, right? So if price runs through here, it's not that you've done anything wrong necessarily because you've built your trade idea that's repeatable. And as long as it's repeatable and consistent, it's going to work over time and has a positive expectancy. That's thinking in probabilities, right? So 
if every single time you execute it in exactly the same way and you build your trade idea in exactly the same way and it has a positive expectancy, you've done what you need to do. The actual outcome to the trade, you don't ever know what the outcome is going to be. You know what I mean? That's based on a probabilistic perspective of price continuing or not continuing. You don't actually know that part. That's not a part that I would really be bothered about. As long as it's got a positive expectancy, you've tested it, you're confident with it, and you've seen it works over time, that's all that matters. Your only focus then is to just put your mind on executing this same process over and over again, regardless of what the result is. You have to look at the result over 10 or 20 trades or look at the result over the whole month of trading, but the whole month of executing your system perfectly, then what does it look like? And that's thinking and probabilities from an execution perspective. So to answer your question, the only question you really need to ask is, if you've built your high probability trading idea and this is your execution area where you're supposed to execute based on your rules, did you execute it perfectly? That's the only, that's the only thing you should be asking yourself when it comes to this actual execution of this trade. Okay. I got you. Thank you. There's a, uh, you need to take your mind away from, and I, I say you, I'm talking in, in general, but take your mind away from knowing what price is going to do after you've executed the trade. Like you don't need to know that part of trading. That's, that's the part that you don't control within your trading. So you don't need to put your mind there and thinking about if price is going to continue or not. Like that part is irrelevant in your trading. I mean, obviously it's got relevance, but for the actual execution of the trade, it's irrelevant. Your mind should only be focused on the flawless execution of the trade every single time. You can go into like analyzing the trades and analyzing your edge and how it's performed over a, a good amount of series or at the end of the month or at the end of the week. But when it's actually trading time, your focus should be on this flawless execution of your system. That should, that's all it should be focused on performing and flawless execution. Uh, Morton, you said it's not your entry because you're doing M16 right now, or in terms of for one minute perspective, your entry. Like previous yeah. entries, why is not your entry? Yeah, just from the 15 minute perspective, right? This is my entry here on the 15 minute chart. So this is the only way I enter. Obviously you can use the same concepts on the minute chart and build your own system based on the minute chart. And obviously everyone's entries is different, but for me, obviously I'm only trading the 15 minutes. So I don't go down to the one minute to execute trades. Yeah, but in terms of one minute, like previous strategy, would you consider this valid trade? I mean. In terms of the entry exactly, would you wait for this uh, bullish order flow first or would you enter a limit order here? Uh, yeah, that's like that part is down to you, right? If based on is it a valid trade, based on what this whole webinar is about, would you say that's a valid trade? Does it fit? Does it fit a potential bullish structure? Are you playing out of intention? Are you playing at a good location? Do you have a target in mind? Yeah, because cause for me, this will uh, bearish momentum, like tells me like not to play against this bullish momentum, the huge one, the higher time frame momentum, even though we see on the one minute, like trend new market yeah, is right now, um, let's say, yeah. Yeah, I see. I see. That's the part of some people's trading where they will be more aggressive and say, I'm going to get involved anyway, because we're coming into a higher time frame buy mitigation. And we've seen intention being shown in the market with a, a bullish initiation. Whereas some people will look at this bearish initiation and say, I'm not getting involved in that because we're very clearly bearish to the downside. That unfortunately, that's the part I literally can't answer for you. you know I mean, that's based on your experience in the market of saying, based on all the times that I've seen price initiate out beside his range, we normally continue. So I'm not really looking to get involved in that. Whereas someone else will say, well, we've broken into a, we've moved into a buy mitigation here. I've actually got a narrative of higher prices now because we've got everything in play for my trade idea to the upside. We're coming out of a point of mitigation. We're at low prices. We're seeing intention at a point of mitigation. And if we continue to the upside, my one to 10 might even be before that, be before that 50% area, for example, like that might be enough for someone to take a trade for a continuation to the upside. That's the part that you need to use the concepts to experience yourself with. It's very difficult for me to answer that question to say I would, or I wouldn't get involved in the market at that point. Okay. Thank you. And one more question, because sometimes I confuse the speed of the aggression, which is the representation of the intention, the market and, uh, the real price delivery. Like, would you go on minute 15? Uh, so, sorry, say that again. 
could you go on a minute 15 year? Sometimes I'm confused with speed integration and the overall trend. For example, this week, it was like a lot of, let's say, signs for the bearish intention, but overall, we had like bullish M15 structure, trending structure, even though we have a lot of bearish momentum down. So yeah, I'm confused with that. And what would you comment on that? I mean, uh, what, what's, what's the course location? What's, what's the part that you're confused at though? I'm confused, for example, if we are having like a speed and aggression momentum down, let's say, for example, could you go on Thursday? Yes. Yeah. Look, Thursday, Wednesday, and Tuesday. So basically this is the entire bullish trending structure. Yeah. But on Thursday, we had that super, like we speed and aggression momentum down, which is a representation of the intention. Yeah. So I was expecting like I got the loss there because I was playing like this continuation leg at 50% after the liquidity grab, even mm -hmm. though we have this speed and aggression, bullish speed and aggression. So yeah. Yeah. Let me draw actually. Yeah. Because we get liquidity grab here. So this was my entry point. But eventually it went. In terms of. Obviously, Alex is drawing on a sideways range. We're coming into a sideways range. So there's always a possibility that we might react out of anywhere within this sideways range and see a potential continuation, right? Because that's intention in the market. Like th these are times where when price is overall moving sideways, you have to look at the price and not get too attached with one thing that you're seeing. It's like, because I was very attached to sales at the start of the session, right? But I'm also understanding that we're coming into a buy mitigation. So anywhere within this area, we could see a reaction from and a continuation to the upside, just based on this as a range initiation mitigation continuation. So I came into the session and said, yep, I'm only looking for sales. But as soon as price starts to create new intention into the market at points where we could see reversals, this is where I'm open-minded enough to say, okay, price is showing me that it wants to move higher. If you play, and this is something else, right? If you had a bearish narrative within price and you're looking for bearish continuation, right? For, and this is your setup to play that bearish continuation and you get taken out, there is nothing wrong with that, right? You followed your bearish intention. You followed your understanding within the market. You were wrong this time, but your entry was correct because you saw a reaction and then you got taken out, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's fine. That's a part of your process and that's a part of actually trading, right? That's a part of how you see the markets and how but you want to get involved in the markets. As long as you keep this same system that you're playing over time, that's where our risk rewards play out. That's why our risk rewards are positive. So that even if you are wrong in these situations, you might have got the right entry, but you played the wrong intention at that point. That doesn't matter. If you, even if you took a loss here, it doesn't matter, right? As long as you're keeping everything consistent about the way that you read the intention and the actual entry that you play is fine. Right. If even if you get taken out here for a, a loss or a break even, because you're keeping your entries and you're keeping your trade ideas consistent. And that's what works over time. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that trade. Okay. And in this case, if you see the speed of integration down, would you consider reconsider in the moment like bullish narrative and enter the, the long? Here. In the moment. I mean in the moment. Are you talking about if you see this? Yeah, like if you see initially, initially, initially was like this, this is a buy trade that I got into. Um playing that, you know, the um did you get into the webinar late? Yeah, yeah, I got late. I will see the recording. I just oh, I to kind of sort of like if you see the speed and aggression and uh would you consider yeah, doing it? I was thinking I went over okay, this I will, I will see. Sorry, I went over this whole trade idea. That's why I was confused why he was asking. But yeah, we'll see if you got in late. So the, in terms of... Oh, so sorry, don't, don't need to repeat. I will, I will uh, watch the recording. Okay, okay. cool. Um, if we went into this in detail though. So that if you had any more questions, just at me in the, the Discord and I'll, I'll go over it again. Um, but oh, perfect. Thank you. That's in the same way. I was like, to hedge shorts for long. Didn't play long and short. I was following that intention today. Nice. Good stuff, Alex. I was about to be... It's about being fluid and being open to both sides. It's a skill. It's okay to be wrong once you've played your intention, entry to go along with it. The trade isn't up to you if it wins or loses. Exactly. That's trading though, right? It's just, you're not going to be perfect every single time. Some things are just going to be out of your control. 
and that's just normal. I mean, we have to always focus on the habits and the decisions and the the things that we do actually control in our trading, because these are the things that we actually, we can, we can have an impact on. Things that we can't control, like the outcome of the trade. These are things I try not to put my attention on too much. So like when I'm in trades, I always try and stay as neutral as possible. I always try and redirect all my thoughts that come into my mind to be in very neutral about the outcome of the trade. So that I don't attach myself to the outcome of the trade. That's really important. Anything that's to do with expectation, I try and take my mind out of the expectation. I always try and redirect myself or my thoughts into just focusing on the flawless execution, focusing on having good performance, focusing on reading the intention and getting the right direction in the market. Because these are all things that I can have control over.